hello. Um, since I'm missing my first uh, Pemako Buddhist retreat in a few years this weekend, uh, I thought I'd talk a little bit about retreats, my experiences with retreats, and also the importance of going uh, to retreats on a regular basis. So, uh, first of all, one of the major benefits of going to retreats that I have found is that it really boosts your motivation and keeps the practice consistent and on track. So, for example, the first retreat that I ever did, uh, it wasn't a Pemako Buddhist retreat, it was in the Cuenca tradition, um, a Theravada tradition. Um, and so we were sitting about, uh, the retreat lasted for 10 days and we were sitting for approximately 10 hours each day. And previous to that retreat, my practice hadn't been very consistent. I wasn't sitting on a daily basis or at least, um, or I mean, I wasn't um, consistent about it in the sense that I would have periods where I would sit a lot periods of motivation, energy was high, but then as soon as the energy started declining, uh, I would kind of fall back into a more chaotic, uh, well, lifestyle and didn't really focus that much on practice. But after having done the Goenka retreat, um, I, uh, my sitting stabilized in the sense that it, beca it became a daily, a daily practice. Uh, and it wasn't only due to the just sheer amount, of course it, it played a part uh, that uh, we practiced so much on the retreat that that one hour, two hours um, coming back from retreat was, well, fairly easy compared to the actual retreat. But it was also because it really showed me the potential or at least partially showed me like the potential of meditation that it's no joke in, <laughs> in a sense like it, it's it really has profound effects on the mind so that initial retreat really boosted my um, my practice and made it much more consistent which is which really is key when it comes to spiritual practice and i found also that after that retreat i've been doing uh, for the past four years since I believe either July or uh, August in 2016 I've been doing most of the retreats the Pemako Buddhist retreats uh, meaning that um, I've done at least six seven eight even more some years retreats every year uh, and that includes both residential retreats and weekend retreats and also private retreats um, and what i found is that it really keeps my practice on track like it really gives me the consistency in my daily practice to get that boost of clarity uh, that comes from retreats and if you're like me which I've never been disciplined, I've never been consistent, uh, uh, never been able to, or never been very good at focusing on a future goal and then working towards that abstract goal. I'm more of a gratification now kind of person. Um, so if you're anything like that, then really, going to all the retreats you possibly can go to is the, is the key to deal with that kind of personality when when it comes to dharma practice uh, also people who who do have that discipline will of course benefit from from the retreat and it will in, probably increase the amount of daily sitting and the quality of the daily sitting and that is also because of the second major benefit that I've experienced, uh, which is um, the understanding of the practice that comes, the understanding of Dharma that comes from retreats. So the retreat setting is so that it eliminates distractions as much as possible. Like 
there's no internet, there's no television, uh, you're not on your phone, uh, and there is no reading books. So you're pretty much left with the daily sitting schedule, uh, eating, hanging out with fellow practitioners, and also uh, sleeping, resting. And outside of that, there is not that much that goes on. So the lack of distractions combined with the increased uh, um, amount of sitting really allows you, you could say, allows you to go deeper. Um, and by that, I mean that not necessarily deeper within yourself in the sense that you're blocking out other things, but it really allows you to zoom in uh, on your own mind, your own body, your own mind, uh, and allows you to see, see those uh, in a more subtle manner, see how the practice works in a, with, with more clarity, and of course also it uh, brings about uh, recognition of the natural state, the nature of mind, to a greater degree than, uh, well, less practice uh, in a home setting with distractions does, allows for. Uh, so, especially like um, for beginners, the recognizing the natural state is really the key issue in, in Dharma practice. Uh, and the retreat setting really allows for that. But it also allows uh, uh, um, people with more familiarization with the natural state or for whom the natural state have, have stabilized, more or less. It allows them to penetrate deeper into the contents of mind, to see it much more clearly, uh, which of course is uh, the key to purifying the mind. That's the basis of Vipassana, is to see these phenomena clearly. Also, uh, recently on a retreat that I attended in Dublin, I experienced, um, it was a weekend retreat, first a weekend of practice, and then after that there was a post-retreat. So previous to that, like in the, in the weeks before that, and also on the retreat, I experienced this kind of subtle, sticky feeling. I couldn't put my finger on it. Uh, it. It didn't feel like it had like a particular location. It felt like it was, like it was contracting, but it wasn't contract, contra a, a contraction or tension in the form of an object. So it was really difficult to kind of discern uh, or to study it. Like I knew pretty much what it came from in my personal life or what had triggered it at that particular moment, but it was difficult to, to um, study it. Um, so what happened on, in, on the retreat as it progressed was that it became clearer and clearer. And on the post retreat, which is just like a, it's just a more informal retreat that takes place after the main event. Uh, on the post retreat, I, the, it became much more concrete. I was able to feel it as a, like it, it had like a general location of the stomach area. Uh, and I was also able to, or, or I wasn't trying to get rid of it, manipulate it. I was just curiously watching it. And as I was watching it, it rose to the heart and then it revealed itself as a deity. And what I mean by that is that the self-based aspect of it fell away and I saw it as just a pure form of energy. Um, there was like, a, there was warmth, suddenly this sticky, nasty thing became warm, loving, and it had the same um, exact vibe as a particular deity in our, uh, in Pemako Buddhist, the, the set of deities of Open Heart Yoga. So that really, seeing it that clearly, like I've, I've experienced similar things before and I've had things release both home in home practice and on retreats, 
But seeing it that clearly kind of click, made something click uh, and gave me a greater understanding. Also on a conceptual level, a understanding of, oh, that's what we're doing in, in Deity Yoga. Like we're familiarizing ourselves with all these uh, different um, uh, energies in the form of deities. Uh, first familiarizing ourselves with them and then when they become familiar enough uh, we actually start experiencing the uh, contents of mind so to speak the energies within our uh, body mind system as deities um, and that I, I, for me uh, I felt that was quite important uh, like an important both experience and and kind of the conceptual insight that I took away from it, the understanding of the practice. And uh, would it have come outside of retreat settings? Well, it might have, but I'm pretty sure that it would have, um, well, taken a lot longer. Uh, so the retreat setting really is made for, <laughs> well, made for practicing, basically. And with that, you really get to both experience things uh, that you might not experience that much in your home practice, but also derive understanding from it that uh, either you wouldn't without a retreat or it would come later in your practice. So it really speeds up that, that process of understanding. So finally, um, the last Thing I want to like the last point about retreats is the is the fact that you're practicing together with other people, um, people who like uh, of course very different people, uh, but who have the same goal uh, for being on the retreat. Like they come to retreats for pretty much the same reason, which is to study themselves, to purify the mind. Um, for the benefit of all beings and um, that is also like something special that is something that you don't really get to experience outside of the of the retreat setting and like one one like a like one basic benefit with it is that practicing together has a like a you say a synergetic synergic synergetic effect Meaning that, like, uh, just like with two candles, you put them together, flame uh, grows stronger. And in the same way, when you sit in a meditation hall with many other uh, people who also who are practicing the same practice, uh, something something happens. It becomes stronger. There is that um, um, joining of forces, so to speak, which is very beneficial. Also. Uh, uh, more mature practitioners uh, or for, for beginners practicing with more mature practitioners has the added benefit that it actually lifts up so to speak like uh, it makes the uh, it has that same kind of like uh, the it has a beneficial effect on beginners to practice with more mature practitioners but also of course uh, a benefit for more mature practitioners to practice with others. Uh, so that's just like the basic thing is that just practicing in a group is really, really beneficial. Uh, secondly, also on retreats, it's not just about sitting. Um, we also have work schedules, at least on our retreats. Um, there was one retreat where we didn't have a work schedule. Um, actually two retreats, but one recently. Uh, that I have attended uh, that didn't include uh, basic tasks for all the participants and what I experienced uh, on that retreat was that it didn't really feel um, the same like it lacked something the retreat lacked something we didn't have to cook the food we didn't have to clean didn't have to do anything basically so that coming together effect was weakened in a way so there is benefit of having to just work together uh, not only because it, it creates like a um, uh, in 
in Norwegian we say that it welds people together more. Um, um, I'm sure you get the picture. Uh, but also uh, the benefit of working together is that so on retreat you're dealing with your stuff. Most <laughs> retreats you're dealing with something or, or another at one point, like your own samsaric stuff patterns will, will come to the surface. And, uh, but you still have to work with people uh, on retreats. So, and seeing that everyone is there for that reason, it's kind of the perfect laboratory setting for learning how to deal with your own stuff in a social setting. Um, and that really, like, uh, I've, I've never found anything else that works that well for her, for learning that, for practicing that, which has a direct benefit on your life at home. On retreats, we actually, uh, in Pemako Buddhism, uh, as most of you know, we speak, we talk, talking is loud. Uh, so there is no kind of retracting into your own bubble. You can't do that. You, you kind of, um, at one point or another, you will have to engage socially while dealing with some of your own issues, uh, which really prepares you for, for uh, <laughs> life outside, for everyday life. Um, and also one benefit that I think that many people who haven't visited retreats or haven't visited them, visited them regularly, what, what I think that they might not know is that a lot of the teaching, a lot of the magic of retreats actually happen outside of retreat settings. So since we're talking on retreat, eating together, there are all these situations where something can come up and also teachers uh, engage with the group. There's not that, in some traditions there's this separation where you just see the teacher as he walks up to the, or she walks up to the <laughs> throne, the, the um, sitting where they sit, and that's pretty much it. You don't see them for much of the other activities but in uh, in our retreats uh, like there there isn't that separation meaning that these like, teachings can happen at any any point like very casually and I've experienced that so many times on retreats like casually sitting around having tea and then uh, somebody brings up something and it, it just automatically gets a discussion going uh, and you can learn something from it that um, that you like, uh, and it's like that is different in a way from the official sessions or question sessions or uh, the official meditation time. So that's another like a kind of a hidden uh, secret on for retreats that there is that spontaneous spontaneous aspect since you're spending time all together uh, spending time together all the time um, yeah I think that's what I wanted to say about retreats don't want to make this this video is already longer than I was planning it to be but go to retreats they're really beneficial thank you